Hello and welcome to another episode of my Productivity Mastery Series. And today what I want to do is to show you what you can learn from some common sense financial advice in the world of time management and productivity. So let's begin with what maybe perhaps many people would desire. Perhaps we would like to desire to own a Rolls-Royce Phantom II. Perhaps we would like a Gulfstream GS700 private jet. And by the way, I only know about that because of researching for this video. Or perhaps we might want a beautiful large country house estate in the English countryside. Well, perhaps I would maybe in the past wanted to do that. And maybe an expensive watch. Now, the question I have for you is whatever your big desires are, the big purchases in your life, what is stopping you from pausing this video right now and going online and ordering these things? You can order an expensive watch. You can actually order your very own Rolls-Royce Phantom II luxury car. You could go to a real estate website and put an offer in for a large country house. And equally, perhaps you could go to Gulfstream's website and place an order for a private jet. The question I have is, what is stopping you from doing that? Now, the chances are for most of you, maybe not all of you, but for most of you, the chances are the reason you're not doing that is because you don't have the funds. I know certainly I don't have the funds for any of those items. So this is where we can start learning about real time management, real practical time management. And that is, if you look on a graph and let's say we've got $5 million to spend, which for many of us, including myself, is a huge amount of money, which I certainly don't have. And I still want to buy my luxury car. I want to buy my house. I want to buy even a yacht, which maybe I didn't put on the list there. And also I would like my Gulfstream jet. The trouble is, even with $5 million, I just don't have the funds to be able to purchase pretty much any of these items. Yeah, maybe I can get the Rolls Royce, maybe I can get the luxury watch, but I certainly wouldn't be able to get the house, the yacht and the jet. It's just not enough money, not these days. Well, the thing is, what I notice is every single day, people are doing exactly this. They're trying to buy stuff that they just don't have the resources for. And what you're trying to do, and when time management and productivity comes involved here is, what we're trying to do is we're trying to stuff in, cram stuff in that we just don't have the time for. Now, the great thing about time as opposed to money is time is equal, it's equality, because we all get 24 hours a day. We all have different responsibilities, different life goals, different areas of focus. That's fantastic. That's what makes us human beings. That's what makes the human race such an exciting race because we are all so different with different needs, different wants, different desires. But we still all come up against the same issue time and time again, which is time. Time is fixed. There's nothing we can do about it. And even if we decided, I don't want to worry about time, we still have day and night and there's some activities we can do in the day and some activities we can do at night. But there are others that we can't do at daytime, we can't do at nighttime. Just a really simple example. Right now here in Korea, we are enjoying very warm weather. It's about 27, 28 degrees Celsius, which I think is around about the high 70s, low 80s. Now, this means it's way too hot to take my dog for a walk during the day now because the, the asphalt, or as we call it in the UK, tarmac, is too hot for my dog to walk on. So we take him out now at night time. I've had to adjust my schedule for instead of taking the dog for a walk around about lunchtime, I take him out at night. So even if you decided to do away with calendars and clocks and time, you still are affected by time between day and night. And again, there's nothing you or I can do to change that. So what we have to do is get really realistic about what we do when it comes to our, 
day. How are we going to organize our day? Think of that, those hours that we have each day as being the hours that we have as the money that we have in the bank account. We can't overspend. I suppose we could borrow money from the bank or from someone else, and that's like hiring a virtual assistant. But again, it's only so far that will go, and it does need to be repaid. So where you want to be starting is your calendar. Your calendar is like your bank account. It's your time bank account, if you like. That's going to tell you how much you have available each day and each week to do the things that you want to do. Just like a bank account will tell you how much money you've got in order to spend on the things that you want to spend it on. So what we need to do is just look at this calendar and say, right, where am I going to do this important work? Now, quite often if you're working in a company or even if you're working for yourself like me, you're going to have several appointments each day. I'm quite strict on how many I allow each day because I'm very aware of how many tasks I also have to do each day. But still, you open up the calendar, that's your bank account, that's your time bank account. That's where you can decide how much time you're going to spend on each of the activities that you want to do. So in this example here, we've got, I, I'm looking at my screen here, but we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, six meetings, all, let's just say for argument's sake, one hour long. Well, if we're working in a normal, typical eight or even a nine hour day, that only leaves us with actually two hours and perhaps one of those hours is we normally would have for lunch. And sure, you can work through lunch and I know many people do, although I'm not ever advocating that you do that, we do need a break. But the problem that we have in this particular example are these tasks on the right hand side. Where are we going to do those? Now, one of them is pretty simple because we've, in this example, we've got an hour dedicated for communication. So we can clear our action this day email in that time. But what about everything else? I've got four, five meetings, five hours of meetings, and I've got really one hour available to prepare for the leadership team. I've got to write two proposals. I've got to work the sales report. I've got to do my <coughs> talk to HR about the new hire. There is more than two hours worth of work there. What am I going to do? So what you need to be looking at here is the prioritization. Now, in this particular example, preparing for the leadership meeting, if you've got a leadership meeting in the afternoon, you've already kind of broken. I mean, that's going to be the priority. I always tell people that when it comes to prioritizing, look for the time sensitive issues first because they are usually the ones that are on your head. I've got a leadership meeting this afternoon. I need to sit down and prepare the leadership report for the, prepare the report for the leadership meeting. That's obviously going to be the priority and you've got an hour before that meeting to be able to do that. You probably are not going to have time to do any of these other tasks. What that's going to do is that's going to move now, at the end of the day, you're just going to open up the task list and see you've only done one, perhaps two, maybe three of these 10 tasks that you have to do for today. Now, a lot of people are beating themselves up at this day saying, task man, I'm too busy, I'm too busy. Well, yes and no, but then everybody's too busy. But instead of beating yourself up, perhaps we need to just take a step back and to start looking at things a little bit more realistically. How much time are you going to dedicate to your work each day? Now, I work myself, I run my own business, I work pretty much seven days a week, although I do try to take an afternoon off and an evening off at some point in the week. So I'm working about 15 to 16 hours a day. Now, I would never complain about that, and I'm not suggesting anyone else should be doing that. I love my work, so it doesn't feel like work for me. I'm very, very fortunate. But not everyone is in the same boat as me. So when it comes to our work, what we have to do is to look for the priorities. Sometimes, if you're in sales, for example, perhaps the priority are going to be anything related to doing client work. Perhaps if you are working in administration, then maybe the, the deadlines that you have preparing, you know, preparing reports for your boss and stuff like that for his or her meetings, you know, that's great. You're going to have a pretty good idea of when they are. They are going to be your priority. But I think 
a lot of it is rather than trying to manage time, we want to be learning how to prioritize. One little secret I can share with you right now is a lot of the stuff we think we have to do, if you just leave it alone for a little while, they often sort themselves out and you don't need to do anything with them. You know, sometimes we're rushing to do stuff when actually if we just slow down a little bit, a lot of these things will sort themselves out. I know that Yitzhak Shamir, the former president of Israel, learned this lesson when he was prime minister. I also know going further back in time, Napoleon used to adopt this principle where he would put his letters to one side for three weeks before opening them because he realized that 90% of what he was being asked to do sorted itself out and the 10% that was left was probably where he should put his attention. Now, of course, we live in a much faster world today. Perhaps you can't do that. But instead of being quick to respond to an email within five minutes, perhaps you can just delay that for an hour because you might find that you'll get an email within that hour saying, it's okay, don't worry, I've sorted it out. You know, those emails are blessings in disguise. I love those emails. I get them when people lose their password or trying to log into their, account, uh, their learning center uh, dashboard using an incorrect email address. I often see, I see an email saying, help, I can't get into my, my dashboard. If I just wait an hour or so, or usually it's because I'm in sleep because I live on the other side of the world, what I find is I get an email within the hour saying, it's okay, I fixed the problem. And it's usually because they were slightly typing the email incorrectly or using an incorrect password, which they changed. So anyway, what I really want to say is, if you're worried about the time and you worry that you haven't got enough time, perhaps what's happening is you're, you're looking at things, the wrong thing. You're looking at the wrong side of the equation. We can't fix time. What we can do is look at the activity. And the step there is to look at the priorities. Where are your priorities? You never want to be time bankrupt. Time bankruptcy is worse than financial bankruptcy because time bankruptcy leads to stress, it leads to overwhelm, it leads to anxiety, and ultimately it can lead to mental breakdown. You never ever want to go there. Financial bankruptcy, you can recover from. You can actually start rebuilding your life once you're declared bankrupt. When you are time bankrupt, it's a long, slow, drawn out process to the point where you get to later in life where your health is so damaged there is no recovery. This is why you need to get on top of this right now, because this is not just about you know, a simple thing like not having enough money. I mean, that, I say it's simple, it's probably harrowing and horrible. I mean, I've been there so many times, but it's nothing compared to destroying your health to the point where you cannot recover. So make sure that you Rather than fighting the time side of the equation, you are looking at what you're doing and setting priorities. As I say, the easiest way to set priorities is to look for the time sensitivity. Things that need to be done now, get done now. Things that are not needed for the next three weeks can be pushed off to the following week. There are a lot of strategies. I've got plenty of videos out there that can help you with that. But please understand, time bankruptcy is never a pleasant thing. Well, thank you so much for watching this video. And it just remains for me now to wish you all a very, very productive week. Hello, thank you very much for watching my videos. Now I have something exciting to tell you about. Recently, I have developed a brand new time management system. It's a system designed to manage your time in the 21st century. The world has changed a lot over the last 20 years. In fact, it's actually changed a lot this year. And what we need now is a system, a time management system that is very easy to use, easy to maintain, so that you can spend more of your time doing the work. And that's what the time sector system is all about. It's going to change your whole belief system about way, the way a time management system should work because this focuses on when, when you are going to do the task. And let's be honest, it doesn't matter how motivated, inspired, or how urgent something is. If you don't have time to do it, it is never going to get done. And that's what this system is built around. 
getting your work done so you can spend more of your time doing the things that you want to do. I hope you join me in this course. The full details of the course are in the show notes below. So please join me and thank you very much for watching this brief video.